So next one is PS crystal oscillator. So the circuit diagram is shown here. So here the crystal is connected in the feedback path between base and collector. I think you should remember the circuit as a collector to base feedback biasing circuit. So crystal is connected in the feedback path between base and the collector. So R1, R2, RE and CE, they are going to provide the necessary DC bias and uh, controlling the Q point of your transistor and RF choke. So RF choke will ensure that the DC is completely coupled to the collector of your circuit thereby ensuring that uh, the collector of the transistor is properly biased and this capacitance C will block DC and allows only AC signal. See the capa inductor you know it is going to allow DC and block AC and capacitor is reversed. It is going to block DC and allow only AC. So that is why I'm going to have this capacitance in the feedback path between the base and collector. So any DC signal coming from the collector will never pass through the capacitor. It will be going only through the collector of the transistor. So the frequency of oscillation is given by F0 equal to 1 by 2 pi root of L into CS. And this L and CS are coming from the crystal oscillator parameter. So the crystal oscillator has an equivalent circuit. You have L, CS, R, CP. So this F0 is given by 1 by 2 pi root of L into CS. So then this crystal provides the positive feedback. So this path is going to be providing the required positive feedback for the oscillator. The main advantage of Pierce crystal oscillator is it is very simple. It is very simple in designing. So if you put the crystal, it is just like conventional common emitter amplifier. I am just going to add three components extra. I am going to add RF choke. I am going to add a crystal and I am going to add a capacitor. That is the only difference.